YouTube. Every week, uh, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time, I go live with you to talk about this conversation, to have a conversation about keto, about fasting. Uh, and we've seen just amazing transformations here at, at Keto Camp inside our Keto Camp Academy. Not just weight loss. Look, weight loss is a side effect of getting healthy. But we've seen amazing transformations of people getting off of their medication, getting off of their insulin, reversing their insulin resistance, reversing their diabetes, because that's what keto can do for you, especially when you apply it with fasting and do what I call keto flexing. So I want to take this opportunity to answer questions for you. Uh, let me know, first and foremost, where you're watching from. Put your city, put your state, put your country. I'm here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. If we're just meeting today, it's so great to meet you. I'm grateful that you decided to join this video. The universe and God aligned for it to happen. So it was not by coincidence. It's because this conversation and this video is going to change your life. My name is Ben Azadi. I am the founder of Keto Camp. I'm the best-selling author of four books. And here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. So I see Merca in Finland. Uh, I see uh, other people in Texas in the house. Do relight electrolytes break a fast? Let's start with that question. So I love relight electrolytes. The ones that are flavored do have stevia and you know, technically, it, it might break some of the benefits of a fast. However, I think it's great to have relight electrolytes during a fast because it'll really help support it. And you might lose some digestive healing benefits, maybe not. But here's how you can know for sure. I would test blood glucose right before you have your electrolytes with water and then test your blood glucose 30 minutes after. If you see a glucose rise of five points or higher, then yeah, you're, it's breaking some of the autophagy benefits. But if you don't see that rise, you're good to go. It's going to be different for everybody. I would venture to guess most people will not see that rise. So for me personally, I have electrolytes during my fast. I'm fasted right now. I have electrolytes in here. Uh, Relight, I'm a big fan of. I love Element. I also just like good old Redmond's Real Salt. So if you want to learn more about Relight electrolytes, uh, my affiliate link with them is ketocampsalt.com and our coupon code with them, I believe is ketocamp or ketocamp15. Rob says, what are your thoughts on berberine? And I see Juan from North Carolina. I see Addison in Crestview, Florida. I see Marcella in Michigan. I see Summer in the house. My thoughts on berberine, I, I love berberine. I think it's a fantastic herb. It could get you a lot of the same benefits as something like metformin. If you're not familiar with metformin, it's a medication typically given to diabetics, type 2 diabetics, to help control their, their glucose and insulin. Berberine is not a medication. However, you could still get similar benefits to the metformin. So I like to cycle berberine. I like to cycle all my herbs and supplements. And berberine is something I cycle in and out. There's two different types of berberine. There's regular berberine and then something called dihydroberberine. Dihydroberberin is much more potent because it is the active form, meaning it's already converted for you. Your gut doesn't have to make that conversion. If you're just taking regular berberin, you could lose some of the benefits during that conversion in the gut. So dihydroberberin is great. I interviewed Sean Wells on my Keto Camp podcast and Keto Camp YouTube channel earlier this year, and he did a masterclass on it. But let me share with you how I personally use berberin when I'm having a keto flex day. If you're not familiar with what a keto flex day is, a keto flex day is a day where you intentionally get yourself out of ketosis by consuming more carbohydrates. Here at Keto Camp, we love keto, but we don't think you should be in ketosis long term. We believe in metabolic flexibility and metabolic freedom. So after we've done the work, which is eight to 12 weeks of being in ketosis, which is what I teach in my Keto Camp Academy and in my Keto Flex book, then we start flexing. So if I know I'm going to have a high carbohydrate meal, I'll take one to two capsules of berberin. And what that will do for me, it'll help with my postprandial glucose. One of the best markers you can test to see how fast you're aging or if you're anti-aging or healthy is to look at postprandial glucose. Now, postprandial means after a meal. I like testing an hour after a meal and two hours after a meal. And here are the markers you want to look for. And this is looking at your blood glucose. And you could test your blood glucose 
with a finger prick machine like Keto Mojo or even a CGM, which stands for Continuous Glucose Monitor. You want to see your blood glucose below 120 an hour after eating a meal. And then two hours after eating that meal, you want to see it drop below 100. If you're going to have a high carbohydrate meal, it might be hard to hit those numbers. By taking berberin, it'll help you hit those numbers. So my thoughts on berberin, it's great. Just make sure you speak with your doctor before making any changes and make sure you're not taking it every day. You're cycling on and off of it. So I only have berberin before a high carbohydrate meal. Hope that helps you, Rob. And the one that I use is from Genius Brands on Amazon. They have one that's a dihydroberberin. What is the impact of keto? I assume you're talking about keto. What's the impact of keto and vision and eyesight? We know when you have high levels of glucose, when you're not doing keto, it, it could damage your blood vessels, including the blood vessels that uh, are around your eyes. So it could actually affect your vision. It's very common for diabetics to start losing their vision. That happened with my father. He had to keep increasing his prescription and keep increasing his prescription. Uh, when you lower your glucose and insulin, it could only help with eyesight. You could take additional eye support. You could take some lutein. You could take some carotene. You could take some other things. Red light therapy could be great. Uh, and it, it should improve your eyesight. Now, I'm wearing glasses. However, these are not prescription glasses. They're simply just blue light blocking glasses. It's helping to filter out the junk light coming from my computer and the fluorescent lights. They're non-prescription. They're just meant for filtering blue light. I saw a question on Instagram I wanted to get to. Let's see. Sammy says, I'm 44 days into 75 hard. Good job. In the past two or three weeks, I've been waking up in the middle of the night sweating. What are, what are, we're doing keto and fasting. Is this night issue part of changing my lifestyle or is it hormonal? Well, we know that the liver is very active in the middle of the night around between two and 4 a.m. The liver is detoxifying. It's dumping bile and recycling bile. That's called liver time in Chinese medicine. So if you find yourself waking up every night around between two and 4 a.m., it could be a liver issue. So you might want to take some liver support I like the one, the brand Systemic Formulas. They have L-Liver, they have LS, they have liver gallbladder support. You could find them over at ketocampsupplements.com. You could also aim to get some MCT oil. Sometimes the brain runs low in glucose and cortisol is activated to raise glucose and it wakes you up in the middle of the night. So by taking some MCT oil, uh, like C8 caprylic acid, about a one to two teaspoons before bed, that could prevent you from waking up, uh, or even one teaspoon of raw honey before bed. Uh, I would give that a shot and see if it works for you. Ashley in Loxahatchee, Lo Lo Florida. I could never pronounce that city. Loxahatchee, Florida, I think it's pronounced. Lois, in, or I'm good to see you, Lois. We have Croatia in the house. Hey, Tatiana. Uh, Ashley says, what can I do about what can I do about too much energy during a long fast? It messes with my sleep. You know, it's very common actually for a longer fast to interrupt your sleep. And the reason is this, counter-regulatory hormones. Your body is so smart. It's really, really incredible. You have this innate intelligence within your body that does cool things, especially when you fast, you could really activate and harness the innate intelligence. So when you're fasting, especially longer fast, two, three days or longer, you have a process in your body called the sympathetic tone that becomes activated. It's also known, it's also called your counter regulatory hormones. These hormones run counter to insulin. When you're fasted, insulin drops and these hormones go up. Glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, adrenaline, uh, human growth hormone, these all go up and it could give you energy. It should give you energy, but then it could interfere with your sleep. So uh, it's really hard to overcome this during a, lock, a longer fast. You might just have to deal with it. And then when you break the fast and go back to your regular schedule, you get your sleep back. But you could do things like taking phosphatidylserine is a great thing to take to calm the adrenals and maybe lower, lessen this, especially at night. You might want to take it before bed. Phosphatidylserine I take and recommend from a brand called Serifos. S-E-R-I-P-H-O-S, Serifos, that could help. Um, and that's what I would recommend for you. Serifos could help for you. 
David in the UK, good to see you. Paul in the UK, good to see you. Robert Andrews, good to see you. Jennifer from Los Angeles. Hey, Jennifer, welcome back. I've been following you now for a few months. Got your Keto Flex book. This Friday is my birthday. Happy birthday, Jennifer. I'm going to use that as my flex day and plan to drink a little. What do you recommend? Yeah, um, enjoy yourself. That's what flex days are for, to make sure you could have your keto cake and eat it too. Uh, what I would recommend is enjoy yourself and don't even stress it. The number one thing I, I don't make it an exception on, even on flex days, is vegetable oils. As long as you could avoid vegetable oils, maybe stay active on that day, walk around as you're drinking the beer, drinking the alcohol, uh, walking around after eating a big carbohydrate meal, and then just getting right back on track the next day after your birthday. That's what I'd recommend for you. Thanks for getting the book. I hope you're enjoying it. If you want to get the book Keto Flex, you can get it today over at ketoflexbook.com. How much berberine do you take? I take one to two capsules of the Genius brand. Let me see how much that is. Genius brand berberine. Let's see. I don't remember the dosage, so let me look it up for you. 170 milligrams of dihydroberberin. Sometimes I'll double that. So that's the dosage in the blood sugar genius brand support capsules. Multi force, send me an email support at ketocamp.com. Support at ketocamp.com. Haven't heard of uh, your company yet, Alkaline Minerals. Hey, Carla in Toronto, good to see you. Tajana, I have one kidney and I, and I, uh, I'm not sure what you meant there. Can I have a protein supplement, but I don't exercise? That's something you want to talk to your doctor about. If you have a, some kidney issues going on and you have a lot of protein, it could be an issue. So speak to your doctor about that and see what your doctor says. What, what would be a perfect day to flex? You would, you would flex after being in ketosis and doing the work for eight to 12 weeks, then you would practice flexing. So in the book, I talk about that. I give you a four pillar structure and you want to stick with healthy carbohydrates, fruit, yam, yuca, sweet potato. You want to increase your carbs, increase your protein, decrease your fat on a keto flex day. Berberin is an herb that it helps to lower glucose. It's, per, it's spelled B-E-R-B-I-B-E-R-B-E-R-I-N-E. Berberin. I have a lot of nausea. What can I do about that? A few things you can do. Uh, it could be a toxicity thing going on. So you might want to incorporate some bitters to help support your liver. Uh, you might want to increase your salt, drink some carbonated water, maybe some ginger tea, maybe some stomach ease tea. So those are a few things you can do. Hey, Mashava in Guyana, South America. Good to see you there. Hey, Anjali from Canada. Good to see you there as well. Love seeing you all, all across the world. What a blessing. Shar, good to see you on here from Canada, Toronto. Some Keto Camp Academy members in the house. Kathy says, to start keto, do I need to do the 2222 for a week to get fat adapted? During that seven days, is if intermittent fasting 16 8 or not? How long do I need to wait to do intermittent fasting? Yeah, Kathy, I would recommend doing that 2222 rule that I outlined in my book, Keto Flex, for the first 14 days and have three meals a day, not really doing any fasting. After that, you should be in ketosis, no side effects, no keto flu. Then you could scale down the fat, increase the protein, and practice your intermittent fasting schedule. That's the way I teach it in the book. Carmen says, hey, Ben, can I replace potassium supplement with cream of tartar? You can do that. Cream of tartar has a lot of potassium. I would also increase your green leafy vegetables to get some potassium as well. So both can be done. Lynn says, listen to the Dr. Platt interview. Very interesting. Yeah, that was a fascinating interview. If you haven't listened to that, I interviewed Dr. Michael Platt, author of Adrenaline Dominance on my Keto Camp podcast, which released just a few days ago. Fascinating. He believes the root cause of many symptoms, depression, ADHD, weight gain, weight loss resistance, Frequent urination, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disease is a result of high adrenaline, not enough progesterone. So it was a great conversation. Go listen to it. I will eventually release that video interview on our YouTube channel as well.
just going up the comment section here. Diana says, I'm allergic to coconut and I know that coffee, the coffee that you prepared contains coconut MTT oil. What can I do to replace the coconut oil? Just put in some grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee. No need for the coconut oil. That's what I would do. Do you recommend a brand? Just joined your keto camp. So grateful you joined, Tanya. A brand for what specifically? Um, I'm not sure what that reference. So repost the question and I'm not sure what you mean, which brand for what specifically? I mentioned a lot of things so far. Let's see. What are your thoughts on, Juan says, what are your thoughts on protein spurring diet to access accumulated fat? I think it's a great tool to have days where you do protein sparing and then have days where you uh, have high increase of protein. The, the variation is the key. So I'm a fan of it, just not every day. Is NIC good by itself or do I need a tough, do I need another supplement with it? NSE, well, you'll get benefits by itself. Then. Monica in the Bahamas, good to see you. Always joining us, Keto Camp Academy members. Shaney says, Shaney's says, what magnesium supplement do you take? Trying to find some good, clean magnesium complex. I rotate my magnesium. I take, currently I'm taking the one from Upgraded Formulas. They have a nano magnesium, which is a small particle magnesium that has the ability to cross your cell membranes. So go to upgradedformulas.com and they have an upgraded magnesium. We have a 15% off coupon code with them, which is KETOCAMP15 to get 15% off. I like them. I like the Bioptimizers um, complex of magnesium. I like the one on ketocampsupplements.com. I like to rotate them. What are your opinion? What is your opinion on prove it exogenous ketones? So you have any resources for scientific studies done on exogenous ketones, says Andrea. Uh, let me take a sip of my coffee and I'll answer the question. There's a time and place for exogenous ketones. Now, prove it makes a high quality exogenous ketone. You want to make sure it's high quality. I don't like to rely on exogenous ketones. I like to do the work. So here's where I would personally use or recommend exogenous ketones. If somebody has been starting keto, but they're three weeks in and they're not in ketosis, they're having a tough time producing ketones, maybe I'll get them on an exogenous ketones for seven days to prime the pump. Done that before. If somebody is going to go through radiation via airport security, the x-rays, or just uh, radiation exposure from like chemotherapy or going to get an x-ray done. There's some research that shows exogenous ketones can protect from, from uh, radiation exposure. So I would use that then. And then maybe I'd use it for like a brain performance hack. If I want to be sharp and get some ketones flood in the brain, the brain could use those ketones. I might use it then, but I don't rely on them. I like to help the body produce ketones endogenously, which is from within versus exogenously, which is a supplement. Hope that helps. We have Alina, who's a part of the Keto Camp team, helping out with the YouTube comments. So anytime you see a comment from Keto Camp, that's Alina. She's helping out big time. What's the best and fastest way to get back into ketosis when falling off keto for a couple of months? J Mo. Two things you can do. All right, I'm going to give everybody here. So this is great for somebody to get into ketosis if you're brand new or for somebody to get back in if you've fallen off track like you, JMO. Two-step process. And in seven days, I can get 98% of people in ketosis with no side effects. First step, two, 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 two rule. I outlined this in my book, Keto Flex. Now my mentor, Dr. Pampa, came up with this rule. Every day you wanna consume two tablespoons of avocado oil or olive oil, two tablespoons of grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee, two tablespoons of coconut oil or MCT oil, and then two teaspoons of sea salt. That's step one. You do that for seven days straight. 14 days would be better. At the same time, you want to gradually start to decrease your total carbohydrates by 20% each day. So if you're having 300 grams of carbs per day right now, drop that to 250 on day one, and then 200 on day two, and then et cetera. Keep doing that until you drop your total carbs for the day below 50 grams. And when you get to that point of 50 or less grams of carbs per day, you want to make sure your total carbs are coming from green leafy vegetables. If you do those two steps in seven days, you'll be in ketosis. That's the best way to get back on track. I also have some videos on my Keto Camp YouTube channel uh, to accelerate ketone production. 
via caffeine and MCT oil. So go watch videos on my channel. You're very welcome, Andrea. I'm glad that helps. Peter Nielsen, how much lean mass is lost during intramuscular fat redu reduction? That's a tough one to answer. It's going to be very different for everybody. So I don't know. But if you focus on protein and lift weights, you have nothing to worry about. Ketones are muscle sparing. All right. So ketones are muscle sparing. And if you pair it with fasting, fasting also raises human growth hormone, which is muscle sparing and muscle building. Keep those questions coming. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Keep them coming. I see a few more here on Facebook that I'll get to. Manal in Canada, been struggling after Thanksgiving to get back into intermittent fasting. Follow that two-step approach I just said. 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two rule, gradually decrease carbs. Protein could also help. Muriel in Newfoundland, Canada. Good to see you. Jason Brent, when you become fat adapted, say after years of low carb, will your ketones usually stay low? I'm always at 0.3. Yeah, when your metabolism is really efficient and you're now your brain is using ketones, this is more keto adaption versus fat adaption, which is being in ketosis for longer than eight weeks. Um, you're going to see lo less ketones because your brain and your body's using them. Not a bad thing. What you can do though is I think you're due for a keto flex day or two. Maybe you want to throw in one keto flex day per week or two keto flex days per week to see those go from 0.3 to 0.7, 0.8. Uh, but your body will become familiar with using ketones. So you'll see them lower. Not a bad thing. We don't want to chase ketones. We want to chase results. That's what could be happening with you. My thoughts on NAC. I think it's a great supplement. Um, I get to see you on here, by the way. Uh, I would take it. I would cycle on and off of it. It's going to get harder to get NAC. I think they're putting a ban on it. Uh, kenosis, kenosis. Almost like ketosis, ketosis. Hey, Ricky from Texas, what is your recommendation to lower blood pressure while doing keto? All right, great question. I have a video on my YouTube channel. If you go on YouTube and type in keto camp blood pressure, I have an entire protocol for you, but I'm going to share something with you. If you have high blood pressure, you want to do two things. Lower insulin because insulin will cause blood pressure to go up. So lower insulin by following a, key, a clean ketogenic approach. And then number two, support the kidneys with electrolytes, support the kidneys, maybe with some kidney support. You could overcome that by lowering your insulin. Go watch my video as, as I go a little bit deeper. Um, Mickey Davidson says, if I have gallstones, can I do keto? Now there's a few, you wanna work with your doctor. There's a few things you can do to support the liver and gallbladder. I would recommend you go watch my video on keto without a gallbladder. Even though you have your gallbladder, that video could help you. You want to focus on bitters. Something else you can do to break down gallstones and lower your bilirubin is actually get some sunshine. I interviewed Dr. Anthony J on my Keto Camp podcast this year, Mayo Clinic scientist, and he said sunshine actually helps break down gallstones and lower bilirubin if that's very high. So sunshine, bitters, and go watch my video on YouTube on keto camp, or excuse me, keto without a gallbladder. David Spears. I have a friend who's vegetarian for his religious beliefs and has type 2 diabetes. Can you recommend a diet book for him? Yes, I recommend Ketotarian by Dr. Will Cole, my friend, Dr. Will Cole. That book will do him well. Muriel says, had my blood work done. All was great, except my uric acid was a bit, was up a bit. This is normal for a very low carb. Is this normal for a very low carb diet? Now, uric acid is actually an antioxidant. And the reason your uric acid might increase is because of inflammation. So a few things you can do to lower uric acid. There is, uh, I'm trying to remember, cherry, uh, cherry tart extract. Cherry tart extract could help. Nettle root could also potentially help. Of course, this is not medical advice. I would recommend, Muriel, you go watch my video on YouTube about gout because that could be relevant to your higher uric acid. And there's a whole protocol there. So type in on YouTube, Keto Camp Gout, and that'll help. But cherry extract, cherry tart cherry extract, or chart cherry, <laughs> tart cherry juice. Hard to say that. Tart cherry juice, tart cherry extract 
and um, some stinging nettle root could potentially help. Sunitha, hi Ben, watching all the way from South Africa. Just bought your book, Keto Flex on Kindle. It's amazing. Thank you, Sunitha. The book is available on sale for Kindle over at ketoflexbook.com. Summer says, if I bring my copy of Keto Flex, will you sign it for me in Las Vegas? I would be honored to sign it for you and give you a big old hug in Las Vegas. So yes, please bring it and say hello when you see me. Uh, for those of you who are going to be in the Las Vegas Keto Expo this weekend, I can't wait to see you. And if you're not going to be there, there's still time. Go to lvketo.com. I'll be speaking in Las Vegas. I'll be there this Friday, and then I'm speaking Saturday. And then if you're in Miami, I'm also speaking Sunday. I got a crazy weekend up ahead. Here's my weekend. Tomorrow, me and my fiance, Natasha, we fly to Las Vegas from Miami. So Miami to Las Vegas. I'm going to record some content with Think Media. I'm going to be on their podcast. Sean Cannell, Heather Torres, their entire team. We're going to do some podcast recordings at their studio, having dinner with them at night. And then Friday, we're doing a keto camp meetup at noon. And then the conference starts Friday afternoon. Saturday, the conference is all day. I speak Saturday. And then Saturday night, I fly out at 12 a.m., red eye, to Miami, get to Miami at 8 a.m., and then go to the Biohacking Congress in Miami to speak in the afternoon at the Biohacking Congress in Miami doing a lecture and then doing a speaker panel after that. That's a lot. Let's see if all the things I do to biohack my body will help me get through this um, weekend, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, wish me some luck and I hope to see you in Vegas. Send some more questions my way. I'd be happy to answer it for you. Uh, did I get the vaccine? So I could tell you this. Your vaccination status will not, uh, how's the wording go? I forget the sentence. Your vaccination status won't let, allow me to love you less. Meaning, if you chose to get the vaccine, I love you the same. If you chose not to get the vaccine, I love you the same. I think the most important conversation we should be having here is people making an educated decision and freedom to do so. Now, I'm personally healthy. I do all the things right I need to do. I, I trust my immune system. I trust the innate, innate system within my body. And I have not gotten it. So uh, it doesn't mean I have, I have friends and family who have gotten it, who I love. And I have friends and family who have not gotten it, who I also love. Bottom line is we should have the freedom to make the decision. So I'm not going to get into the conversation because it's very uh, slippery. It's a slippery slope. It's like talking about religion and abortion and politics. Same thing with the vaccines. Uh, either way, I love you. And whatever the question is, the answer is love. So personally, no, I haven't gotten it. I'm still kind of, uh, I'm still kind of um, unsure about it and the long-term effects. It just hasn't been proven. Plus, I've seen some things that show you could spread it either way. So it doesn't make sense for me to get it. Uh, we're traveling, but in the U.S., they don't require it. So in the U.S., if you're traveling from outside the U.S. into the U.S., I think you have to test for COVID, but uh, they're not re requiring a, for us to use or to get vaccinated to travel within the U.S. So I think thankfully that's the case. Any updates on your progesterone use? Yeah, um, got it right here. So this is based off the conversation with Dr. Michael Platt on the Keto Camp podcast. He sent me three bottles. Uh, I haven't used it long enough to, to notice anything. Uh, I'm about four days into using it. So Jason, uh, I'm going to go for 30 to 60 days and then I'll have an update for you. So reach back out, but nothing, nothing yet. Thank you, Clara. Love you right back. Crazy schedule. The best of luck to you. We'd love to hear which biohacks you would be using. Yeah. Thank you. Health mirror KS KSA. So in Vegas, I'm going to be speaking about the art of keto flexing. I'm going to get into keto. I'm going to get into fasting. And then the biohacking Congress, I'm going to be speaking on five health biohacks to change your health and change your life. Um, so there's two different presentations. And then I'm doing a speaker panel on the Sunday. Are there travel restrictions without the vaccine? Not inside the U.S. right now. There's no travel restrictions you don't have to get the vaccine to travel within the U.S. right now. I hope it stays that way. I, I don't like, I don't like people being pressured into a decision that's a medical decision. I think people should make their own decision. That's where I stand. That triggers some people, but 
I, I just think we should make our own decision. And my decision is that I, I trust my, my body. Do you recommend any sleeping supplements with keto and fasting? I'm finding I have more energy, harder to sleep. Yes. I like DREM, D-R-E-M from Systemic Formulas. If you go to ketocampsupplements.com, just go to ketocampsupplements.com and type in sleep supplements and you'll see a whole list there. But DREM is one that comes to mind. Yes, I know Ken Berry. He's a friend of mine. We've had interviews with him all three times already on my podcast. Dr. Ken Berry is amazing. Traveling in Europe, you have to have it. Uh, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. And scary, by the way. It's crazy and scary. Could I ever... Oh, I see a whole bunch of questions here. Herb, Urban Spice Kitchen, good to see you on here. I, I would love to see you, but I know that you're in the UK, so no worries. Good to have you in the academy, though. Will the keto diet help diabetic neuropathy? Yes. Okay, work with your doctor, but absolutely. Of course it will. Keto diet could help you reverse your diabetes and help you get off uh, or, or get rid of the neuropathy pain. So yes, it has to be clean keto though. Do you agree with carnivore? I love carnivore. I wrote an entire chapter of it in my book here, Keto Flex. It's one of my pillars. I like it as a short-term tool. So I love carnivore. Absolutely. I do it three to four times a year. Diana says, you have the most amazing attitude and wisdom I've ever seen. Wow, that is... That is quite the, the praise, and I received that with an open heart. Thank you so much. Um, attitude and enthusiasm, it's all about that. I can tell you this, being, being online, being in, in the health space online, posting and getting a lot of traction, a lot of people will send hate, hateful comments, hurt, hurtful comments. Whenever I see a negative comment, I know it says more about the person and what they're going through versus me. So I send them love. We need more love. Dr. Wayne Dyer said... Whatever the question is, the answer is love. We may disagree on many topics, but we got to respect each other. Cornelia, 2.0 ketone, 71 glucose, 74 hours into a three-day water fast, and I did a 10K walk each day, feeling off because I hate bread and cake, so trying to get back. That's a great way to get back. It's impressive. Great numbers, too. Thanks for wishing me luck. Have a great weekend. Sounds like you sound so busy. You got this. Thank you, Lois. Could I ever reverse the fact that I'm allergic to honey, garlic, coconut oil, and watermelon? Now, the, the microbiome is always changing. And just because you are, well, allergic versus sens sensitive. So let me know, did you mean you're allergic to them or you're sensitive to them? If you have an allergy to them, uh, I don't know if you could reverse that, maybe. But if you have a sensitivity to it, yes, you could overcome that. The microbiome is always shifting. So you might want to eliminate them for some time and do some things to heal your gut. Uh, do I have a Patreon? I'm really liking you. Thank you, M Mickey. Uh, I don't have a Patreon, but if you want to support me, get my book Keto Flex over at ketoflexbook.com or buy it for somebody. Uh, that would be a great way to support. Or if you want to just share my YouTube channel or TikTok channel with a friend, that's also a great way to support for free. Um, in a nutshell, what is mTOR says one? Let me ask you guys the question. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the answer and I'll explain it to you, but I want to know your answer. For those watching right now, my highly educated keto campers, what do you what is mTOR? In one sentence, how would you explain mTOR? I want to hear, I want to see your answer before I answer it. What is mTOR? And then I'll give you a, a great analogy on mTOR. The person who answers the best answer for mTOR, I'm going to give you my KetoFlex cookbook for free, a PDF download of it for free. So with one sentence, how would you explain mTOR? I'm going to give you a couple minutes here. The person who answers the best, I'm going to give you a PDF download of my KetoFlex cookbook. <clears throat> And as you do that, I'll answer this question by Clara. I continue to crave sugar. What can I do? L-glutamine. Glutamine will help you wean. So you might want to take 500 milligrams of L-glutamine three times a day. That could calm the part of the brain that lights up when you experience a sugar craving. Also increase your protein, animal-based protein. Aim to get 40 to 50 grams of animal-based protein at the minimum at each of your meals, which is 8 to 10 ounces. 
Desmond said, I lost 56 kilograms on keto and fasting. Congratulations. You look great in your photo. And now I'm stuck to lose the last five kilograms. Any last month tips? Yes. Um, cold exposure could help. Make sure you're getting two hours of deep sleep each night. That could help. Putting on some lean muscle mass, that could help. And even green tea extract could help. Congrats, though. Keep at it. You'll, you'll get there. So let's see. The best answer. So Summer says mTOR is building muscle. Deanna says building muscle. Bob Dinker says central regulator of metabolism. Jennifer says growth hormone. Uh, what are other answers do I see here on YouTube? Body builds up stuff. mTOR is when the body is the state state of continuous growth. Okay, all awesome answers. Monica, I think, had the best answer. So Monica, who's a Keto Camp Academy member, uh, just email us, Monica, support at ketocamp.com. Alina will give you that link of the PDF download. So Monica says mTOR is when the body is in a state of con continuous growth. All right, let's talk about mTOR. Now, we talk a lot about autophagy here at Keto Camp, and you could activate autophagy, which is cellular repair, cellular cleanup, and it is more catabolic, but in a good way, your body gets rid of the junk or cleans out the junk within your cells. The opposite of autophagy is mTOR. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. All you need to know, mTOR equals anabolic growth. So whenever you hear that word mTOR, whenever you see a scientist or a doctor or a health coach talking about mTOR, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Think of bodybuilders. It's growth. mTOR in spurts is absolutely amazing, super healing to the body. But mTOR all day long is inflammatory and it will lead to a shortened lifespan. Go look at bodybuilders. They're always in mTOR. They're eating high protein every two to three hours and they have a shorter lifespan. So the magic is in balancing mTOR autophagy, which is feast, famine, feast, famine, growth, repair, growth, repair. In my book, Keto Flex, I give you a four pillar approach to balancing out mTOR and autophagy. So I hope that helps and I hope it makes sense for you. What are the best electrolytes? My muscle gets so weak and I get heart palpitations. I like Redmond's Relight. And I like LMNT. So Redmond's Relight, you could find over at ketocampsalt.com. And then LMNT, I think it's drinkelement.com. That'll help with both the cramps and the heart palpitations. Is dried cr cranberries okay for us on keto? In small amounts, it could be okay. It could act like a bitter to stimulate liver bile to break down fat, but not in high amounts. Is gluconeogenesis more to a diabetic who eats a ketogenic diet, Sabrata says. Gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis takes place all the time. Uh, yeah, it might take place more in a diabetic, possibly, but gluconeogenesis is just the creation of glucose. When you're in ketosis, your body will manufacture glucose from protein that you eat or from the fatty acid, the backbone of fat. It's not a bad thing. So I wouldn't really focus on gluconeogenesis. I would focus on eating quality fat and protein and decreasing your carbs. That's more important. Zeta says, hello, thank you for all that you share and do for us. Intermittent fasting daily from 12 to 3 or daily till 12 or 3 p.m. And I'm stuck at the same weight. Any suggestions? Yeah, mix it up. If you're doing the same fasting schedule, maybe you got to do a 24-hour fast. Uh, make sure your sleep is rock solid. Your sleep is where your body, 98% of your fat burning hormones are activated during stage four delta sleep. I'm going to say it again, 98% of your fat burning hormones are activated, not at the gym, but during stage four Delta sleep. So if you're having trouble getting that weight off, make sure you're getting at least two hours of quality sleep. Go watch my, go watch my free keto uh, sleep webinar over at ketocampsleep.com. That'll give you an idea of what your mattress might be doing to your sleep. Hey, uh, before I answer more questions, I have a, a favor to ask of you, please. If you're getting any value 
from this video or any value from any of my work, they're doing an, an award ceremony right now called Keto Weekly. And I have been nominated for Keto Influencer of the Year, along with some of my other brilliant colleagues. And if you really like my work and would take a few seconds here to vote for me, here's what I want you to do. And Alina, if you could actually, let me post it in the, I'm going to post it in the YouTube stream and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then for those on TikTok on, so on the YouTube stream, click that link there on Facebook and on Instagram, go to keto-weekly.com, keto-weekly.com. And here's what you're going to see. The voting is taking place right now. You're going to see this right here, which is the Ketogenic Awards for 2021. I have made the top five for the uh, Keto Influencer of the Year. You're going to scroll down. You're going to put your email address right here. And then what you're going to do if you want to vote for me is select Benazadi Keto Camp and then select all the other people that you want to vote for. Hit this button here and then hit submit. It'll take you 30 seconds or less. So I would love your vote. They're voting right now. We would love it if we could win this award. So go to keto-weekly.com, go to the Ketogenic Awards, and then click Benazadi Keto Camp and then vote for the rest. And that would be terrific. And if you already voted for me, thank you so much. It means a lot to us over, over at Keto Camp. mTOR is a protein that regulates different cellular processes, including autophagy. Yeah, great answer. Great answer. Autophagy starts at the 18-hour fast. Uh, so for some people, yes. Some, somewhere between 16 to 18 hours, you'll get this autophagy ramping up. You can only know when you are in ketosis with testing. How do you know if you're in ketosis? The best way is to test. There's three ways to test ketones in the body. You have breath, which is acetone, which is one of the three ketones. You have urine, which is acetoacetate. And then you have blood, which is beta-hydroxybutyrate. Blood is the gold standard. I like Keto Mojo over at ketocampmachine.com. Once you hit 0.5 or higher on that meter, you're in ketosis. The, the link to vote, and thank you for those who voted, uh, Mig and Sammy and everybody else, the link to vote is keto-weekly.com, and it goes to the page over at Ketogenic Awards. Uh, that would be terrific. Ben, after two and a half years stalking, uh, not stalking, two and a half years stalled, I have once again begun to lose weight. Thanks to your book and the idea of mixing up, losing 10 pounds, I lost 10 pounds last week. Let's go, Lois. Proud of you. Congratulations, Lois. That's awesome. Vegetable glycerin is not the same thing as vegetable oil, so don't worry about that, Dorian. Can honey be used in the keto diet? I'm not overweight. You could have small amounts of raw honey. Just don't overdo it. I was told by an MD, says Sandy, that you could only absorb 20 grams of protein at a time. 8 to 10 grams of protein that you recommend would double this amount. Look, the body is not that simple. The body is very sophisticated. It will use what it needs to use. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> it will use what it needs to use. <laughs> that comment got me thrown off there. <laughs> the body will use whatever protein it needs to use and it will get rid of the rest. So um, the reason I say 40 to 50 grams, protein is so important for satiating you, for building lean muscle mass. I don't agree with the MD that says it's only going to use 20 grams. It'll use what it needs to use. So a good rule of thumb is at least 40 to 50 grams at each meal. Can I vote for you several times? Yes, you can if you use different email addresses. Uh, Alina just posted that. Thank you. That's funny. Good morning, dear God. <laughs> yeah, we all know what that means. At least some of us do. Let's go, Brandon. All right. Zeta says, on my 24-hour fast, can I drink coffee with MCT and water with electrolytes? You can, but if you want to get the most from your fast, I would just say water and electrolytes. The coffee, the coffee will um, potentially for some people raise glucose and negate some of the autophagy, but here's how you want to know or how you could test. Check your blood glucose before the coffee, 30 minutes after. And if you see the glucose go up more than five points, then you're going to lose some of the autophagy. But if you don't see that, you're good to go. 50 grams of protein is satiating. What satiates? Protein activates a few cheminicals and hormones in your body. Cholecystokinin, peptide YY, and leptin, which helps you feel full. Think about it this way. 
when you go to a restaurant and you had a big old ribeye steak, 16 ounces, and you're stuffed, that ribeye, which is a lot of protein, that's like, what, 70 grams of protein? You were absolutely stuffed. And then let's say the waiter brought you another ribeye. Here, we're giving you a free ribeye. You're going to say, no, I'm, I'm too full. I can't eat that because of the fact that it activates these hormones and chemicals. But if you had, if the waiter brought a dessert tray, you could have the dessert tray. You could sip on some soda because it doesn't do the same thing. It doesn't activate the satiety hormones. So that's what protein can do for you. I think protein is very important. You could get my book on Amazon. Ketoflexbook.com goes to the Amazon page. And you could get it. Hey, on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button if you're getting any value from this video. Let YouTube algorithm know this is beneficial to you. Todd says, my wife's doctor says drink lots of water for her kidneys and do keto for her diabetes that is causing part of the kidney issues. What are your thoughts on sparkling flavored sugar-free waters? Um the rule of thumb for water is drink when you're thirsty and, ha and make sure your urine is mostly clear. I like sparkling water. Now, if it has some artificial sweeteners like Splenda, sucralose, and aspartame, I don't like that. But if you have something like Zevia, which is stevia flavored sparkling water, that's much better. Coconut butter is great. I like it. I'm a big fan of coconuts. Adrenal fatigue is a result of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access, I would explore toxicity. I would explore upstream health. So you might want to take my toxicity quiz over at toxicmiami.com. Toxicmiami.com. Hey, Gail, thanks for joining for the first time. Good to see you on here. Thoughts on David Sinclair's cutting meat from his diet. Um, I didn't know that he's cutting meat from his diet. So I don't know. I need another reason why he's doing it. Red meat, high quality red meat is anti-inflammatory, super healing to the body. And I've tested lab work to verify that for myself personally. And I've seen that with some of my academy students. Does too much protein hurt the kidneys? Not if you have healthy kidneys, but if you have a pre-existing kidney issue, potentially. Sleep, working nights, fat burning. Will that affect fat burning for weight loss? Yes, it will, Sammy. If you're working overnight, it'll affect weight loss. Yes. In the ketogenic diet, when triglycerides get broken down to ketones, it produces a glyceride molecule. The glyceride must be a substrate for gluconeogenesis, hence more sugar to blood for a diabetic person. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Watching from the beautiful Caribbean country, Belize. You are awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Sounds like you're at a beautiful place. Hi, Jag. Uh, can you talk about potential detriments of fasting 24 to 48 hours for an in-season college athlete? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna, you want to balance out fasting with feasting. And if you're doing too much fasting and you're very active, it could just be too catabolic for your body. So I, you know, in general, it's probably not a good idea to do a lot of those 24 hour plus fast. If you're very active, you might want to do those fasts during your off season for recovery. That's the way I would balance it. Respected sir. Whenever I think to start keto diet, I have noticed increased appetite and I fail. Please help how to overcome. So Fariha, if you follow that 2222 rule that I explained earlier and gradually decrease your carbs at the same time and then focus on protein, uh, it'll really help with the appetite. A Polish friend talks about autophagy. Is it like keto? <coughs> um, it's not the same thing as keto. Aut autophagy is... There's a few ways to activate autophagy. Fasting activates autophagy. Autophagy is where your body repairs and recycles its cells. Think of the expired groceries inside of your refrigerator where you have expired cells that need to be thrown out. That's what autophagy does. You can get it through that. You can get it through something called synolytics. You could get it through exercise and working out. And uh, so just because you're in ketosis doesn't necessarily mean you're getting enhanced autophagy, but autophagy is kind of happening all the time. But we want to enhance it through fasting, exercise and synolytics. 
I'm very interested in your detox. I feel like everything inside of me is blocking everything. Detox is so imperative. And when I say detox, true cellular detox. So go to toxicmiami.com to determine your level of toxicity. There is a keto bakery in Vegas I want to try. Bring on my keto flex day. Oh, cool. What is it called? For those of you who are going to be in Vegas, like summer, we're doing a keto camp meetup. We're doing a keto camp meetup at 12 p.m. this Friday at True Foods Kitchen in Las Vegas. So if you want to join, you have to let us know. We can add you to the reservation. Email us support at keto camp dot support at ketocamp.com if you want to join us for the lunch. Hey, Rick from Boston. Todd says, your thoughts on very, very occasional cheat days with a small amount of carbs. I call them keto flex days. It's better to do them with healthy carbs, but I think it's important to throw those in after eight to 12 weeks of being in ketosis, Todd. Do you know anything about Kiss My Keto products? Says JMO. If so, are they good? to go on keto. You know, I've heard of them. Let me um, share my screen and let's look them up together. Kissmyketo.com. Let's see. So let's check out their bread. I want to look at their ingredients. I don't really fall for the label, like zero net grams of carbs really doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, they have water, not good. Wheat gluten, come on, that ain't keto. Let's go tell Kiss My Keto, that's not healthy, okay? Wheat is going to spike glucose. Even the, They're getting away with it because of the fiber that gives them their net carb amount, but this right here is not healthy. I would not recommend this one. Let's see, golden wheat. Um, golden wheat has wheat protein, not good. Cinnamon raisin has wheat protein, not good. So the bread's not good. Let's look at their bars. Tapioca fiber, extra virgin coconut oil, unsweetened chocolate, whole egg powder, milk protein, isolate, cashews, inulin, vegetable glycerin, egg white protein, erythritol, cocoa butter, coconut, natural flavor, cocoa powder, Gum acacia, sunflower lecithin, MCT powder. That one's better. At least there's no artificial sweeteners in it. I would ask them what their natural flavor is. Sometimes that could hide a few things. Uh, it does have inulin. So for some people that could flare up SIBO. And they have a gummy candy. Let's, let's look at this one. I think you could see my screen, right? Yeah, you can. Uh, at least on YouTube and Facebook. Gummy candy has corn fiber. Soluble tapioca fiber, erythritol, coconut oil. Yeah, this one could be okay. Again, you don't want to overdo it. It has a lot of sugar alcohol, which could create some gut distress. So just, you know, don't overdo it with this one. Those are my thoughts. Hope that helps for you to see the way that I, I review products. I got so much knowledge from your live video. Thanks. You're welcome, RDH. My pleasure. For someone who has hypothyroidism, I fast for about 16 to 18 hours and one meal a day. Would that cause my metabolism to work even slower? You know, Kevin, as long as you're feasting during your eating window, that could help you. Just make sure you're eating enough. Uh, I think you could fast if you have hypothyroidism, work with somebody. I would recommend you watch my interview with Dr. Rebecca Warren. We tackle this topic in a much more deep way. Himalayan tartary buckwheat. I think that sounds pretty good, but that's more for a keto flex day because it's higher in carbs. Agreed. Best content I've seen so far on TikTok. That is amazing, Jag. Thank you so much. Hey, every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. So put it in your calendar. I show up every Wednesday. I think in the last two and a half years, we've only missed two Wednesdays because I was losing my voice. That's the only reason. Just voted for you, Ben. Thank you so much, Sandra. When I eat sugar, says Hillary, when I eat sugar and carbs on occasion, I really feel anxious afterwards, almost manic. 
did I make myself sensitive to these food groups because of keto? You know what you can do is have some protein with the, the sugar somehow, or even have some berberin. It could just be your body is not processing the glucose well, so you see a high spike in glucose and then a drop, which makes you kind of, the brain starts to panic. So maybe berberin could help you out there. Thank you so much for going over those products. My pleasure. My pleasure. What keto food, what keto food are good to get used to eating instead of jumping straight in? Billy, go to my, get my free, it's an aisle by aisle grocery shopping list for keto. Ketocampblueprint.com. Ketocampblueprint.com. Camp with a K. And you'll see an entire list of what to eat, what not to eat. My TikTok handle is the one you see um, on the screen at the Benazadi. Where is it? Right there. That's my TikTok handle at the Benazadi. Our TikTok our TikTok account is our biggest account. We have about 150,000 subscribers on there. YouTube is second with like 130 something thousand. Uh, so TikTok is fun. TikTok is really fun. We post a lot of videos on there. Okay, my friends, uh, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Stay in love, stay in gratitude. Keep subscribing to our podcast and YouTube channel and TikTok and Instagram. I hope this information helped you today. Please share it with a friend, text it to a friend, copy and paste the link, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and go watch the other videos we have here on YouTube. We have over 600 videos on YouTube. Love you all.